Hey guys, Mixed Media Girl here. Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. Now, unfortunately, this isn't an actual live video. It's a premiere, which means I will still be here live with you guys in the chat box, but will not be able to answer questions live. So it's the best I can do. I apologize. I've been out of town for pretty much the entire month of July. I just got back from Dallas. And as soon as this video is done, I'm heading out of town again. Uh, but we'll be back to normal next Wednesday. So I just got back from the Fluid Art Experience in Dallas, Texas, and it was amazing. I'm going to tell you about it as we get started on some projects. But please know I am here in the chat box with you answering questions. So as we go, feel free to say hi. Let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know if you have any questions. One of the super exciting things that happened at Fluid Art Experience was the pre-launch of my new pouring medium. So this is massive, you guys. I've been for quite a while working on a product that would be better than Floetrol and do as well as some of the more expensive pouring mediums like the Liquitex pouring medium and the GAC pouring medium without being quite as expensive. So I think I have done that now. Uh, this is what we used exclusively in my classes at the Fluid Art Experience, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do a demo for you. It's unfortunately not quite ready on my website yet, uh, but I may be able to get a pre-sale up, so let me know if you guys are interested in that. I uh, just have to fix a couple things on the label, and then we're gonna get into production. Good news is the company that's producing this is in Southern California, so I can get my product very quickly. So I'm gonna mix up four acrylic pouring colors here, and I do have these awesome Pixis uh, measuring cups, which makes it very easy. So uh, one difference already is that you shouldn't need to strain this. I've had bottles for months and months on end and not had any issues with the stringing that you'll get in the Floetrol. So that's exciting. Uh, I have formulated this to mix it pretty much the same as I would uh, the Floetrol, but it is a little bit thinner. So I'd say it's closer in consistency to Golden's GAC 800. And I'm gonna mix this up two thirds of the pouring medium to one third of the paint. So I'm keeping it pretty in easy. In most of these, I'm just pouring two ounces. I am gonna mix up a little bit extra white though because I wanna be able to do two projects. All right, so I'm gonna use a silver. It often is requested and I almost never use it. This silver is a little bit light though, so I'm gonna add a, just a drop of black into it also. And these are tube paints. So here I have uh, some Arteza tube paints, some Amsterdam tube paints, and some Artist loft tube paints. So that one was Arteza Silver in Amsterdam Black. And then I'm gonna use an Artist Loft Violet, just kind of a deep purple. So I've got two ounces of the pouring medium to one ounce of paint. I'm using the Arteza Pearl Ocean Blue. It's a very pretty color. And then I'm going to mix up some, just some Liquitex Basics white. And for this one I did, uh, I'm mixing up a little bit more here. Now these are tube paints, so they are quite thick. So we may still need just a little bit of water, but you would need less water than you would need with the Floetrol. And I don't know if you can see, but it mixes in really, really easily. Not really an issue with stirring that in. I feel like I may have added a little too much black to the silver, so I may have to go back in and add a little more silver. We'll see. Oh yeah, I love this pouring medium. It stirs super easily. I think that's okay. So it's just gonna be a darker, deeper silver. And as we're going here, guys, let me know if you have any questions. I'm not gonna speed this up nearly as much as I normally would for a regular video because it's kind of like a live. 
So we're kind of doing this in real time. Now I've noticed with Liquitex specifically, while I do love this paint, sometimes it's a little hard to mix in, I have noticed. And that can happen with some other tube paints also. So if possible, I do recommend mixing your paint the day before or even a few hours before, if possible. Of course, right now, I'm gonna just go ahead and mix it up and use it. But one of the reasons I would do that is to reduce the amount of air bubbles that are in here, which there's going to be guaranteed some because we just mixed it. And also to uh, make sure that the paint really, really gets mixed in fully. I am gonna add a little more silver into here. Now, in terms of if you need water or not, I can't really say that off the bat because it depends on what kind of paint you're using. So like this silver is actually more thin than this white tube paint. So I would add either no or hardly any water to this silver, but I definitely need to add it to this white. And if you're using craft paint or something like that, you will pretty much guaranteed not need to add water because they're more thin. Or if you're using like the Deco Art uh, Americana Decor Metallics, I think I said that backwards, but uh, the like the 24K Gold, you don't need to add water typically. I'm gonna actually add just a little more pouring medium to this white. You can also add more of the pouring medium to thin it out versus adding water. But just try to keep that approximate ratio of two thirds of the pouring medium to one third paint. This is still just a tiny bit too thick. This silver I actually think is fine. This blue is also thinner, so that's actually okay. This purple is on the thicker side, so I am gonna add a little bit of water to that. So the metallics tend to be thinner, no water needed. And I have just a squirt bottle here with water in it. I'm gonna just... And the important thing about adding water is you wanna do just a very little bit at a time. You can always add more, you can't take it back out. So I think that purple is good. There's all kinds of food analogies for the consistency you're going for. A lot of times people will say you want honey, but you know, is that cold honey, warm honey? Did you just stick it in the microwave? It's, that could be too wildly varied. Um, so the best I've found is like melted ice cream. <laughs> you don't want it to be too watery and you don't want it to be too thick. So hopefully you guys can see this, but this is a pretty good consistency. Let me go ahead and I'll get set up for the pro first project and we'll get to pouring. All right, we're gonna start off with a funnel pour here. So I have a 10 by 10 inch canvas. It's on my cake spinner. And I do have it held on by double-sided sticky tape. And I have a shower cap on top of the spinner as well to protect it. So I'm putting a white base down and that's because for this technique, you really need some paint for the other colors to go under and that will get you these awesome cells. So I put that white paint there and then I'm gonna also just start off with a little bit of white paint in here. I have the funnel pushed all the way down to the canvas to prevent the colors from coming out early. So here we go. Just gonna layer these colors in here. I like to layer white in there as well, but you don't have to. And pro tip, make sure all your colors are open and ready to go before you start pouring because you will not be able to open bottles while you're holding a funnel. Okay, that should be plenty for this canvas size. So there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can pull it straight up. You can go in kind of a spiral. You can pull it up a little bit and release and then put it back down, which I think is what I'm gonna do here. So I'm just releasing little bits of paint underneath that white. That's a pretty fun and easy technique. No real wrong way to do it, do however you feel like it. Let's see what kind of cells we hopefully get here. Okay, I think 
that's pretty good. I'm gonna set this on top of a cup to drain into. And then we could probably use that for the next project as well. All right, so because there's a lot of air bubbles in here because I just mixed it, I'm gonna go ahead and torch real quick. So one of the reasons why I like to let it sit is uh, those air bubbles that you get just from mixing will give you these kind of like pinhole cells, which aren't very exciting. It does not give you the big juicy cells. Um, so you can end up with kind of a lot of pinholes on your piece. Nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit before spinning just to even it out. Should be pretty good. Here we go. Awesome. We do have some killer cells popping up. Hopefully that silver doesn't take over too much. And you can really spin it as much as you want. You do wanna make sure that there's not too much paint left on there. Um, so you don't have any like cracking when drying issues. I am gonna tilt this just a little bit to get hopefully, I mean, I'm not a silver fan and there's just a lot of it over here. I wanted more kind of a little pop of silver. And I'm gonna spin one more time. You don't have to spin that hard. Just enough to get it going. That is fun. That actually kind of reminds me of like a nuclear explosion, at least from my viewpoint here. <laughs> I'll turn it around. Like the dust cloud, you know? And we've got some really cool lacing and cells in here. It's really fun reactions. So there is our first piece with this new pouring medium. I will go ahead and bring you guys in for a quick close up on this and then set up for the next one. All right, so just super fun reactions on here. Beautiful lacing, which is one thing I've noticed about this pouring medium is it will give you fantastic lacing there. Look at that, so pretty. And who knows, we can continue to have some changes in this, some more reactions, we'll see. If it changes by the end of this video, I will do a new close-up. But for now, pretty darn awesome. So let's do our next project. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do here is a vase pour because that's pretty important to me seeing how this holds up on a vase. Full disclosure, I am using an old vase that I cleaned off so it may look a little bit dirty, but it's in fact clean. And I had this cup that the funnel was draining into, so I'm just gonna use this cup. It's not gonna be quite enough paint for this canvas, but we will make it work. And I'm going to layer this as a dirty pour with a little less silver than I used in the last project. And this is just a 10 by 10 inch canvas underneath here. So because this isn't quite enough paint, I'm gonna start off with just a little bit of the white on the vase here. That'll just help our colors flow as well and make sure we have plenty of paint on our project. Now I'm gonna pour in kind of a tree ring on the top here. There's no right or wrong though. You can pour this however you want. And you can also do this as a clean pour with just pouring one color at a time I find I like the look better of the dirty pour usually, but the clean pour also looks very nice. So it's holding its lines pretty well. And a cool thing is we actually even have some kind of cell reactions on the vase. Now, will they totally stay there or not? Probably not, but you know, we could end up with some, which is really awesome. And there's a lot of white in this, so expect it to be on the lighter side. That's okay. That's how I like it, but use any and all colors that you would like. This vase does not have a dip in the top, so you don't have to worry about the paint sitting on the top. If your vase does have a dip, uh, you might have to tilt it to get any paint out of that dip. So I like to let it sit and drip for probably a good two to five minutes or so. 
and that's going to give us this really cool feathered pattern on the canvas and then we'll pull it off and we'll go ahead and finish off our canvas okay this is largely slowed down on the dripping so i'm going to lift it up by the cup that it's sitting up on i'm going to move that off to the side and then we're going to tilt i like to let this fill in before i start tilting and this is also a fun one to do on a spinner, but I actually usually prefer to tilt it. So we get this beautiful design in here, like feathered, and it can often make kind of either a floral design or kind of a butterfly design, which is why doing vases is one of my favorite techniques. Um, you get just such an awesome two for one project every time. <laughs> So I'm going towards the sides and then back to the middle to maintain my design or towards the corners rather. And I usually like to end up with this off center because that's just me. You can do whatever you like. And for anyone freaking out about the paint on the paper down here, you can absolutely save that and reuse it. I typically will let that dry and use it in other projects. And I have many, many, many videos on doing that. You can also take a, another canvas or something else and you can dip it into here. There's a lot of things you can do. So just, uh, I think I have a whole playlist on my channel of things you can do with the acrylic skins. Search that out and don't worry, none of it gets wasted, okay? All right, so I think this is beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys in for a close-up. So we've got beautiful bright colors here. Beautiful lines. Look at this pattern, that's so cool. That almost looks like rippling water right there. So I just love this, I think it's amazing. And the vase is also super gorgeous. Cannot wait to put some resin on that when it's dry. All right, we are going to do a couple other things. So let me go ahead and move this to the side, clean up a little bit, and we'll do our next project. Now another exciting thing that happened at Fluid Art Experience was the This Little Piggy, or This Little Pigment Girls were there, and I got a chance to talk to Billy, one of the girls who runs the company. And A, she's awesome, but B, I found out that these pigments could be used in resin, which I actually didn't know before. So we're gonna go ahead and try that out. I'm using Mixed Media Girl Artist Resin. Um, I'm gonna be doing another two for one project. So I'm gonna mix up, I think I'm just gonna mix up about 12 ounces here, which will be plenty. I always like to mix up a little bit extra just in case, and then I have other molds around that I can use if I have some leftover. Now, one important note, because I am pouring into a mold, I did preheat my resin. And what that means is I just took the two bottles here before mixing them, and I put them in front of a space heater for about 15 to 20 minutes to warm them up. And that will help with the air bubbles since we're pouring it deeper than it should be. And I always like to add part B then part A because part B is thinner and that makes it a little bit easy to get easier to get a full mixture. It's mixed 50-50, equal parts A and B, keep it simple. I use these measuring cups, they're fantastic because once the resin's dry in there, you can just peel it out and reuse and reuse and reuse. You wanna stir this for about three to four minutes, scraping the sides and scraping the bottom as you go. I'm gonna just address a quick question that I very often get, which is, do you need a respirator when using resin? It's amazing how often I get this question, even though it's been answered about a billion times, but you know, number of times over and people will get it eventually. But long story short, resin is toxic, even if it's zero VOCs. VOCs are volatile organic compounds. That's what that stands for, guys. It's kind of a big sciencey word. But long story short, VOCs are the harmful gases that are uh, that come off of the resin, essentially, when it is going through its chemical process. So this resin does have zero VOCs. That does not mean that it is completely harmless and your 
your baby and your dog can use it or anything like that. I would never in a million years recommend that someone does not use a respirator. But I am also kind of a big advocate for what you do with your own body is kind of your own thing. And I would never say you absolutely have to use a respirator. It is your body. Whether you want to use these gloves or not, it's up to you. Whether you want to use a respirator or not, it's up to you. And I actually do use a respirator with resin typically about half the time, I would say. But especially if I'm doing a big project and I'm going to be exposed to it for a long time, I absolutely will use a respirator. Like when doing countertops or something like that. Also make sure you're doing it in a nice, large, well-ventilated space, but don't be scared of it. There are people out there that will just tell you that resin is horrible, you're going to die, yada yada, which is not true. Um, and everybody's body is different. Some people are completely allergic to peanuts, deathly allergic. They take one lick of a peanut and they will die. I don't have that problem. So all bodies are different. You can't have a blanket, one thing fits all. Also, all resins are different. There are resins that you absolutely 100% of the time should use a respirator. And those are more the industrial ones or ones that do have VOCs. So typically the cheaper resins are going to have more chemicals and you will want to use a respirator. So the ones you can pick up at Michael's, the ones you can get at Home Depot, those have VOCs. So that's just a little bit of an explanation on resin um, and do whatever you feel is best. If you want to wear a full hazmat suit and a respirator, absolutely you should. It's better to be safe than sorry. All right, this is pretty well mixed, especially since I preheated it. If it was a little bit colder, I might mix it a little longer, but it's okay. So we're gonna try these pigments. And I'm going to take just a scoop full of these basically. This one is called Syrah. It's like a deep, warm wine color, which is really pretty. And I'm not quite sure how much to use. So I'm gonna use the same amount I would use if it was a mica powder and pretty much any other colorant. You don't wanna use more than about 10% in ratio to your resin. And I would say even start off with maybe a little bit less and you can always add more. This color is watermelon. So we're going warm colors on this. This color is called sequins. And these are obtained from Fluid Art Co. So if anyone needs help finding them or anything, let me know. Now powders are typically a bit more on the transparent side. Ooh. So I'm going to do a couple, powders are also very light, I'm going to do a couple dyes as well. In this cup I'm going to add some translucent violet. These are Alumalite resin dyes. Very different from alcohol inks, not even remotely the same. So I've added some translucent violet, I'm going to also add a little translucent red. We want this to be definitely on the warmer side. And lastly, in the cup that I had the sequins piggy. I'm gonna add some of this opaque white resin dye. And that's so we can have a nice combination of opaque and transparent. Now we'll add the resin, get that all mixed in. I'm going to do more of white than the other colors. Oh, there we go. It's not a live video if I don't knock something over. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. This is literally my first time using these in resin. So I've not done any pre-experimentation or anything. If it doesn't work out, you will be the first to see that, <laughs> that this doing it this way at least doesn't work out. You may have to pre-suspend it in a liquid and then mix into the resin or something, but from all appearances, it appears to be maybe working fine, just like this. And I often, I've been asked like, what's the difference between the powdered pigment and the mica? Now I'm not a chemist, I'm not a scientist, 
They're just different materials. Okay, these are gorgeous, I'm excited. All right, so I am going to be doing a dirty resin pour. I'm gonna start off with the white. I'm gonna layer the piggies in between the dyes and that will hopefully give us some really good contrast. Resin tends to blend a lot more than paint. I'm pouring it fairly slowly down the side here. All right, we've got our cup there. So I've got this cup that is pre-primed with blue and that's because honestly I was going to do cool colors for this and then I changed my mind at the last minute. That'll be fine though. Um, as you'll notice probably it's pretty loose on here. This is a 12 ounce wine tumbler so you do not ever want your cup to be loose on your cup turner. So a little hack that I do, instead of getting 600 different kinds of foam, which you totally can, nothing wrong with that but I'll take just a little bit of a paper towel here and I will just tape it on doesn't even matter what tape I'm going to use this really horrible packing tape and what what we need is just enough padding to make it stay on there nice and firm um, you can use all kinds of things it's really up to you there's no right or wrong so be a little more difficult to get on there but that means it ain't gonna fall off there we go see it's not moving around not sliding etc I typically will sand wash and prime the cup to make the resin stick better and also because uh, resin tends to be kind of transparent so I will usually use one of the colors that I'm going to use in my project obviously not this time I'm gonna turn my cup turner on I'm gonna start off with just a little bit of clear resin and you can probably see, but I've got a silicone mold underneath here. That's to catch the runoff, so we can do another two for one project, which I love, and I know you guys usually love. When you get close to the top of your cup, just go pretty slow, be careful. If you get it over the side of your cup, you can see I've got resin on my foam here. It is not the end of the world. It actually cleans up real easy. On, if you get it on the inside of the cup, you can just take a razor and it comes right off. Uh, you can also tape off the inside of the cup if you want, totally up to you. So at the top here, I'll usually just go real slow, make sure we get full coverage all the way to the top. And because this isn't our color layer, I am gonna torch it to get rid of any air bubbles before I add my color layer. Do not forget the bottom of your cup. Make sure you get coverage on that. The resin's gonna wanna flow where there is already resin. So if there's no resin on the bottom of the cup, not gonna really flow there. I'm gonna just lightly torch this. Try not to torch your foam. And do not torch your silicone mold. Now the fun part. Take our dirty pour cup, and we're gonna just get this covered. Pour pretty slow. You don't want to overfill your tray at any point, and you don't wanna dump all the resin out before getting full coverage. So pour it pretty slow. I have a feeling this is gonna be a little more blended than I want, but that's okay. I think it'll still be gorgeous. And keep in mind, I put white in the cup first, so that's what's gonna come out last, like you see here. And that's what's gonna give us that contrast. If we didn't have that white in there, it would all blend together into one red because it's pretty transparent and resin likes to blend. So once again, up here around the edge, just go pretty slow. You might need to take your finger and kind of help out that color at the edge. My gloves are definitely too big, which is no bueno. That's okay. Check to make sure you got your bottom. 
and it's not going to stay exactly like that because resin moves and it's continuing to rotate. You're going to leave this to rotate until it is completely dry. So that should be overnight. And then to make it food safe, you'll want to clear coat it with a layer of resin with nothing added into it. These cups also often come with straws. So feel free to use a straw if you don't feel comfortable drinking out of the cup. That's up to you. It will not be dishwasher safe, I don't believe. I have yet to try that, but it will absolutely be able to be hand washed. These colors are gorgeous. I'm gonna let it just spin for just a minute and drip. I am going to quickly torch the cup. You do not want to over torch it or the colors will start to really blend. So just lightly torch. Don't forget the bottom. let that spin for a little while. All right, so this has essentially stopped dripping. I'm going to carefully just slide that out and then we can finish filling in this tray. Just rotate it this way. Now resin is self-leveling so it may fill in this spot but what I also did was just go through and just scrape out the last drippy drips at all of the resin into this cup and I'm going to just fill this in. You can also absolutely tilt, which I normally do, but this time I thought let's just go ahead and use up that leftover resin. Should fill that in nicely. Now once again we do not want to use a torch on this because it will ruin your mold. You can use a heat gun. What I typically like to do though is take some 91% isopropyl alcohol and I'll spray that on here which will remove the air bubbles. And that's as simple as it is. I'm gonna let this level out a little bit, may even tilt just to kind of blend those parts together. Do not get married to this design. It will change. Resin continues to move for hours and hours and hours. So you'll probably see the colors will kind of move inward and you will not keep this design completely. That's okay, it's still gonna be beautiful. The colors are gorgeous, it's just beautiful. One other note is this tray is not completely filled in. So once this initial layer is dry, you're gonna to wanna to put a clear layer on top and in that layer, I will probably add a little bit of the gold dust to give it some sparkle. I'm gonna spray it one more time with the alcohol and then we're gonna add our handles. You can really use any size handles. I'm using bigger ones for this and I'm using gold because I think that's the color that goes best. Put them about an inch from the edge or less, totally up to you. And then just make sure that they are evenly lined up with each other. You can also screw them in at the end, but this I have found to be much easier and the resin does a fantastic job of holding the handles. You would have to work super hard to pull them out once that resin has cured. So adjust it all you need to at this point because then you're gonna just let it dry. So unfortunately, I will not be able to show you guys the dried projects at the end of this video because I'm recording this immediately before going out of town, but I can absolutely show you them in a future video. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed all of these projects. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'm still in the chat box with you for another minute or so. Let me know what you guys thought of that pouring medium and if you guys would like me to put up like a pre-sale on it also check out the this little pigment i will most likely start carrying it in my store if possible because it is beautiful to color resin with and i'm also going to show you how you can use it in acrylic pouring and in acrylic pour blooms coming up in some future videos so 
Have a fantastic rest of your night, fantastic rest of your week. I'll see you all next time.